another one. Um, this is part two. North. Going back to to um, Franklin and completing the uh, ASAP program and alternative to violence program, you know, which was very good. Trust me when I say alternative to violence program, it's the best, you know, because me. I always had a bad temper, very bad temper. I didn't care who you was, you know. I stuck to my business, you know. And by taking the alternative to violence program, it helped me a whole lot. It made me think. You know, like one of the exercises was, if I hit this dude, I'm gonna go to jail. If I hit him right, he'll fall down and break his head and die. Again, if I hit him, he can practice something and all the snitches around will point me out like they do back in the day. You know? But it helps because if you're a person that wants to stay out of jail or prison, the best thing to do is go to a program and take alternative to violence because it helps greatly. You know, I've been in, since I've been home, I've been in many situations where, oh man, if I didn't take that program, trust me, I'd probably be up north. There's a lot of knuckleheads out there who really, some pendejo. Bunch of, you know, pendejo, uh, you know, pubic heads. You know what I'm saying? They don't have, they don't have the skills, but they got the mouth. You know? But see, I'm the type of person, man, if I get into a situation with a person, I'm not going to go upside their head in front of anybody. Or I just invite them to the, let's go to the park. Me and you, just me and you. Okay? If you beat me, I'll shake your hand, and that's it. I beat you, same thing. But you're going to stop this disrespecting, you know? And so, some of these young characters, man, because somebody has gray or, or whatever, white or whatever, that, oh, I can, no, you can't. I would never allow a sucker to try to disrespect me or try to, Dame para abajo or whatever. No. Don't work like that. Okay? I've been a warrior since I was a kid. All right? Yo saqué una cuchilla when I was six, six years old. I chased somebody because they wanted to bully me. You know, they were big and they, I said, oh, yeah, I ran into the store. Ahí en la 107. I ran into the store, grabbed la cuchilla that the guy was carving chicken with or chuleta, lo que sea. And I ran after the kid. We became good friends afterwards, man. He told me, told that loco. I said, yeah, well, my whole family is crazy, you know. But anyway, let's get back to the whole situation of, um, you know, staying out of the system. So while I was there in, um, in the uh, ASAP dorm, you know, I met quite a few nice people, you know. And there were times where, um, like, my boy Danny, like I said, you know, Tal Conectado, and Mason, you know. And uh, we go out to the yard, you know, walk around, you know, do our thing. So, going out there, you know, you meet brothers, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, it was pretty cool, you know. It was pretty cool. They was like low key, and then I see a guy working out. You know, older guy. Must have been like maybe, I think he was like about about sixty or maybe seventy. But the dude was hard. And I said, damn, he looks familiar. 
And when I got close, I said, oh, shit, that's Junior. Junior from 85th Street. He used to be in a gang called the Buccaneers. You know? So I said, Junior. And he looked at me and said, oh, coño, baby, face, get to us aquí. Lo mismo que tú haces aquí, haciendo tiempo. The same thing you're doing, you're doing, I'm doing time, you know. So, oh, man, I said, yo, what happened, man? He said, ah, man, I had a, you know, I had a, a, a run-in with some dude in a bar on Columbus Avenue, man. And uh, then me think, un pepazo en la cabeza se murió. I said, really? You know, he said, I shot him again, and the dude died. I said, oh, wow, man. And how long you been here? He says, so far, 17 years. I got three, three or four years left. You know, they're going to give him a break again, man. I said, bro, man, you know, cuidate, man. He, he go way back, which is true. Me and him, they gave us information to, to hit a place on uh, 80, 82nd and Amsterdam Avenue, right? The guy was a, a, a shark. What do you call them people that long shark? And, you know, he would, he would take jewelry and stuff like that. And it was cool. So... What happens? Uh, you know, we do our thing. How you gonna go? You gonna do a B and E with slippery shoes? I had panties and all that, right? So all of a sudden we hear now the cops, the police, popo, whatever you wanna call them, man. Five O, you know. So we heard them, and then we saw flashlights. And I said, Junior, let's get out of here. So now. In order to get out of there, you had to shimmy yourself up a wall. You know, the wall was like, sort of like this, and you had to, you know, work your way up. And then he tells me, he says, dame una mano. And I looked at him, I said, you must be out of your mind. If I give you a hand, I'm going to be down there with you. You know? And then, and then he tried going up, but he would slide back down. Why? He had slippery shoes. Then I didn't see him. I didn't see him after that. And he, he sent a message. That, uh, well, whoever he saw me, que there was going to be beef or whatever, you know. And I said, I, I, to, I told the person that gave me that message, I said, listen, go back and tell that dude, man, to chill out, man. You know? And uh, it's funny because I ran into him on 73rd Street in a bar. I was with my girl. He became a big movie star in the in the in the uh, Latin Latin market. He was doing novela, soap opera. So we go into the bar to chill, and he's standing right there. And he looked at me, and I said, "Oh shit, Junior, what's up?" He said, "Oh, baby, baby, what's up?" So whoever sent that message, they were full of crap. I'm not saying that Junior was a pendejo. Junior was no pendejo. You know, he was down with one of the biggest clubs or gangs in New York City, which was the Buccaneers, and they had heart. They were all from Puerto Rico, you know, and, and uh, Boricua de Puerto Rico, not New York Rican, but, you know, and they knew this, they knew this stuff. So anyway, we hugged and all that, man. He said, go you, man, I ain't seen you in a long time, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, man, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm sorry what happened, Pipe, but you know, he said, no, no, you don't even have to make excuses. You were right, you know. I was wrong because, you know, I should have came there correct, but I didn't, you know. But, you know, that's in the past, blah, 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 you know. So, um, you know, we became friends, this, that, and the other. And um, then he kept looking at the girl I was with because, you know, she was fine. She was a Boricua with blonde hair, man. Getting that. And um, uh, she, uh, I mean, he uh, said, yo, where you going? I said, well, you know, I got to take her home, blah, blah, blah. He said, oh, okay, man, listen, it was nice seeing you, yeah. So, boom, we, uh, we left. And I didn't see him no more until I ended up in, uh, in Franklin, and he was working at the waste shack or something. But anyway, um, every, like I said, everything was kind of my own programming, doing my thing, you know. A couple of times, some, you know, people give you dirty looks, but, you know, that's it, dirty looks, nothing else. 
um, go out to the yard and see the manitos out there. And we were congregating the manitos and, and the kings. We would congregate and we'll go. And uh, a person that I knew from from uh, the island, Rikers Island, he said, yo, ven acá, ven acá, Santito. And I said, yo, what happened? He said, yo, I want you to meet this brother, man. He's from the Trinitario. You know, I said, I said to myself, Trinitario? I, that's the first time I ever heard the name Trinitario, like Frankie. And then he introduced me to the head of the Trinitario. His name is King Kong. Right? His brother was, man, he was like King Kong. Not that he looked like King Kong, but he was like strong and built like that, you know? Nice people, man. I mean, so I got to know him. I got to know a couple of Trinitarios. And every time they would see me, they would, you know, they would say, Amor de Platano. And I would say, De Corazón, you know, like that, you know? And again, you know, it was like, Closeness. So, um, one day, uh, I think I had, oh, I had to go to, uh, to the place where they, you know, they, you get packages and stuff like that. So, I ran into him in La Cajretera, you know, the walkway. And um, we were talking and stuff like that. And he told me, how much time you got? I said, oh, you know. I did most of my time in, in, in Rikers Island, and, and I got like about, about two years left, you know. So, tu estás corto. I said, yeah, well, you know. And I, I said, what about you? He said, well, you know, you know I'm, I'm doing the best I can. He told me, he said, you know. And then we went there. My brother went there to get, I'm serious, a big thing like this, they planned on him. Just planned on him. And then we, you know, we were joking, walking back, and then he went to um, to the annex. He was in the annex, I think. And um, me, I went back to to Maine. But the thing, the 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 funny the funny part about it is, man, that you know, you meet people. And they're supposed to be, you know, this, that, the other. And I told him, I said, yo, when I was, you know, I was telling him, I said, you know, I understand the situation you're in, you know, running, you know, your family, because I had to run my family in uh, three buildings, you know. And he said, wow, like that, you know. I said, you seem pretty calm and cool, you know, you know, you, I said, well, I'm going to tell you like it is, man, you know, first of all. There's no hatred or no racism in my heart, you know. And I said, and uh, my ex old lady was Dominican, and she got uh, three of my kids like that, you know. She said, "Wow," you know. I said, "Tu eres familia," and I said, "Well, you know, ya tu sabes," you know. And then, uh, um, you know, we got into deep. I was telling him about the people that I hung out with. They were from Aswa and. Then I, you know, I told him about the people that I, I knew real close that were real, you know, they were uh, cañoneros, stick-up kids, right? And I told him about, you know, this guy named Marcian, you know. I don't know if he's alive or whatever the case may be, but I said, yo, he was, he's stone cold, man. I say, he had bodies all over the place. <laughs> he used to love to hang out with me, man. You know, and he said, he said, he said, he went like this, and then I, I heard of that name. I said, yeah, he's from uh, Washington Heights, you know. So, I, like, I, I did my programming, and then they moved me to the annex. And when they moved me to the annex, um, I told the fellas, all right, man, got to sabe. Like that. So, um. I uh, went, I wasn't, I forgot the name of, the, I forgot the housing area. It could have been like maybe, like maybe uh, L something. But anyways, you know, I got there and people, you know, they were like looking at me like trying to interrogate me. 
So they do that. Every, everybody new coming in, you know, they want to know who's this guy. You know, you know. So, you know, I um making my bed and all that. And then uh, this guy, Curita, he kept staring at me. I'm looking at him like, okay, what's this guy staring at? So, um, I chill. And um, the next day, uh, remember, I didn't say nothing to him. He didn't say nothing to me. So, you know, then he tells me the next day, he says, Yo, um, when did you come in? And I come in, you were looking at me yesterday. I said, I came in yesterday, bro. <laughs> like that, you know. He said, Yeah. He said, Yo, they call me Cubita. I said, oh, Cubita, they call me Santito. You know. I said, I tell you, you know. And then, um, you know, we got to know each other and this, that, the other. And one day, I broke the ice with him, man. Because he, he had what they call um, thyroid problems. His eyeballs would stick out his head, you know. So I told him, I said, um, I told him, I said, bro, can I ask you a personal question without you getting mad? He said, nah, go ahead. I said, was you standing on the corner and a bus ran over your feet? And he, at first he thought about it. And then he said, you ain't right, man. You ain't right. I said, why? I know you're talking about my eyeballs. And I said, yeah, man. I said, but you know what? Pero digo de amor. All right? He said, I hear you, man. And we became very good. We became good friends, you know, and stuff. And then one one day, here comes the clown that gave me the pack of cigarettes. He was, he was in, uh, I think he was in box. Something happened. He ended up in the box. And when he came in, Somebody had told me from another place, yo, this guy uh, that's in your house, this guy was in the box, and uh, he's claiming that he was a, a nieta behind the wall, blah, 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 blah. People don't know who he is. And I said, I know who he is. He's a fool, you know? And, uh, and, and uh, he... Um, one day he asked me something, and I told him, I said, yo, man, you know, stay your distance, man. You know, you're not with this. Stay your distance, you know. Can you believe this guy? Whatever he whatever he told the police, the police called me. Boom. He said, do I have any problems with, with, uh, with, with, with that clown? He didn't say that clown. I'm saying it because I don't want to mention the guy's name. You know, whether he's alive or dead, you know, because this happened like 30, 30 years ago. Anyway, so I said, nah, I don't have no problem with that guy. Well, you know, it seems like you got problems with it. I said, I don't have no CEO. I don't have no problems with him. Serious. I don't have no problems with him, you know, because I don't play that snitch shit. I, I never did, never liked it, okay? A lot of, a lot of things happen in life, man, that I've seen. And I like, you know, and uh, so anyway, he, the same dude, he started to get friendly with the, my, my manitos, and he started provoking and throwing shit. You got to see one of the things, man, you know, again, be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you associate yourself with because there's a lot of hate, a lot of haters, a lot of people who hate. So one day, I mean, he like, he bumped into me, man, and I pushed him. I said, come on, what's up? What's up? And he just stared at me. Then he walked away. I swear I wanted to knock him out. Even though I took, I turned him to violence. That dude, I really wanted to do him, man, because he's a snitch, played police and all that. And then he walks around like he's an innocent guy. Oh, you know, everybody. So anyway, um, an incident, an incident happened. Uh, 
And uh, we all looked out the window, and this uh, this dude uh, pulled out a knife on somebody and was ready to cut them. Police came, locked his ass up, and took him to another prison. Um, Bear Hill, because I ran into him in Bear Hill. He so happened that we were in the same house. His, uh, his name was, uh, we call him Trini because he was from Trinidad. Cool people, cool dude, man. And um, in fact, when I came home, um, I think I got a call. Or I don't know how it happened. That Oh, somebody had told me, yo, you know who's home? Trini. I said, really? Where you at? They told me. So I went down to where he was working at. And sure enough, he was there, man. And he, boom, 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 boom. But what happened was that some news person, Hanson, did a story on this guy about bicycles being, you know, uh, sold to him. And he would take the bicycles and pay for them. And, um,. The reality was that he wasn't, he didn't want to, he wasn't doing that, but the person who was selling him the bikes said that they weren't stolen. He bought it for such a price, and he was, can you believe that Trini, you hit, you know, you thought about it so much, man, you know, because he died. Who do I blame? I blame that idiot Hanson who lied about him being on a helicopter in Iraq or some crazy shit. But basically, it was that idiot that caused um, uh, Trini to die because I think he suffered from heart trouble. Plus, you know, he was always like, he had anxieties and stuff like that, you know. And that weighed on his head because he, he knew that if he go to trial, he was going to blow because he, he already had two on him. So three... It's life. Anyway, so after that, man, um, a couple of incidents happened in the house that I was in. And um, my boy, my boy, uh, one of my manitos, his name uh, was Macho. He moved into the house. We got along very good. I mean, very good, you know. And um, we went out to the yard and. We go on to the yard. I see, um, I'm joking around with, you know, the same idiot that was on the boat with me that, uh, you know, tried to box with me. And I made him look stupid. He was there. So he told me, hey, I hate hypocrites que me saluden. Because the reality is, man, they're hypocrites. Why are you going to, you know, salute me? Anyway. I um, said, yo, what's up? Like that. Yeah. Um, how long you been here? You been here longer than you, you know? So, um, one day, I, you know, we were joking around. He had the nerve to tell me, yo, if you keep joking around, man, I'm going to write you up. What I said was, draw me. The Uhama, I said. And then I looked at him, I said, you punk ass, whatever. So he didn't, he didn't, he didn't write me up or anything, because you're not supposed to, you know, come out your mouth like that. But, yo, I, I, I was at a point, man, you know, people, you know, people who irritate you, you know what I'm saying? So, it was like a debate. Who should be what, this, and then uh, here comes another clown. And now he started to make things even difficult for us. And supposedly he was from PR, and yet not from PR, but he wasn't. He wasn't, and he lied to everybody. He was, um... He was against the Nietas. I think he was down with uh, a, a, a group called 27, you know. And, um, but he infiltrated the Nietas, learned everything, you know, everybody, you know. 
and then he tried to sabotage the election. You know. So what happened was that um, we had a big argument, and uh, it was getting ready to go to blows. And the CEOs packed me up and packed uh, my crew up and sent us to the mainland. So now he's in control of the brothers in, in, in the annex. And now he's calling the shots over there. So when we go to the main, um, the, you know, people were talking. They said, yo, we want you and Macho to run the, the Puebla. And uh, I looked at Macho, and I said, what do you want to do? He said, well, you know, I'm already. So then what happened was that Macho became the first in the, the Puebla. And then... Um, I became second in command. So, the, the thing was that we had to really, really, you know, be on a, like this, alert. I always tell people, tira un retato, meaning, be, watch, watch. Okay, so, the dude that, uh, that came with all that crazy stuff, he started talking over the fence because, you know, there's a fence. You got the annex and you got the, the main. This guy is talking all kinds of nonsense. And he's talking now. He wasn't talking like that when we was in the annex, you punk ass. Anyway, so now that we're in the main, now he's big shot. And I told him, man, you, I, I yell at him. I said, you're a punk ass Mitch. I'm using that, but I said more than that. I said, you ain't nothing, man. You talk a big one, man, you know. I said, well, listen, man, you know, when you come to town on the walkway, we can get it on, you know. But when he would go to jail, he was a diabetic, so he would go before all of us, you know. Anyways, so now we had to watch our back, you know. And um, somebody took somebody took drugs. Um, on um, they, somebody took drugs, and then they they I mean uh, borrowed drugs. Said they were gonna pay it back, and and then they left the main to go to the annex. So now me and Macho had to deal with. So we had a, a meeting, we voted, and uh, our decision is, if the guy don't pay, we're going to hit him up. I'm going to bust his ass and make him leave the prison, the, the jail, outside the prison. So um, the, I had a sign, I had a sign to... Uh, initiate the situation. I gave it to the brother and said, yo, make sure that that the annex gets this because that dude messed up, took he took some hair on and put on credit and he don't he doesn't want to pay the people. Okay. So we thought it was you know, he they took care of him. Then another time this idiot that's supposed to be a brother got into an argument with the blood. Now, me and the blood, man, were pretty, we were very cool, man. I mean, you know, he was cool with me, cool with Macho, you know, we had, you know, we lived like brothers. But this idiot, a uh, 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 sucker, wanted to use the stove when the brother was cooking. And the brother told him, said, yo, man, I'm cooking right now, man. So, he pushed the blood, and the blood left hook and pow, and busted his eye open. He runs like he didn't. He didn't fight the guy. He didn't fight the blood back. He ran like a, like a Mitch, right? And um, I think they uh, they took him to sick call, and then they moved him out of there, 
to the annex. And he went to the annex. He said he got jumped by five bloods. People in the annex want to know why me and my and Macho didn't do anything. And I said, listen, you people, you run the annex, we run the main. So shut the F up, you know? And I said, the other thing was, it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Not five people jumping this dude. That dude is a, a Mitch, you know? And Kings backed me up. They said, yeah, Santito's right, man. And so Kings was in the hallway when this whole thing happened. And a, co a couple of nietas. But I, I'd rather call them puñetas because they were a bunch of, you know, disgusting. Anyways, so me and Macho, man, we like, damn, man. And now... They want to declare war on me and Macho. So we say, okay, it's all, it's, you want war? We, there's war between the main and, and the annex, you know? The guy was talking. He he wanted that to happen so that the Nietas can break up. You see? So by that time, again, I was going to school, doing my thing. Um, no, I was going to another program. And... I would like walk down the walkway and him and that other clown from that was in Denimo, they would Okay, you know. And I always said if I ever wherever I if whatever where wherever I catch the you know, I'm gonna do both of them. With my hands, you know. <laughs> but so now they so oh, Oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I said, do what you got to do, man. You people talk a lot of crap, you know. First of all, you and him a bunch of, uh, uh, what is it? You talk a lot of uh, a lot of this, that, and the other. I bet you you was in the street with a cup begging for, for, for money while cars were passing by, you punk asses. But you in here, now you're gangster, you know. Yo, I had, a, I had a mouth on me, man, because you know what? I wasn't scared of nobody. I had to do what I had to do. So, one day, um, Macho, Macho said, this is crazy, you know? You know? And don't worry about it. Now, at the same time, uh, some guy came, some, some, some dude, was working in a machine shop with Danny. And he, he, had, he had the nerve to tell uh, the Kings that that dude was was a snitch, this, that, and the other. I spoke to my boy Smokey, King Smokey. I said, Smokey, that dude? And he said, for real? I said, yeah. I said, Danny... If you knew who he really was, and he said, what are you saying? I said, well, let me tell you something. You see him like that? Está conectado, I said, you know? And I, said, I think you need to, you know, invest, do your investigation, you know? He said, I will, man, I will. Smokey came back and told me, he said, yo, um, he's all right, man. He can live like that. The other guy who who spread who, and supposedly un Italiano he was supposed to be a king. He left the prison. He packed up and they probably took him to Danamona. You know, so I'm like chilling. And then I don't know if some of you people know about Marla Hansen. Hansen, who well, this guy, uh, some rich dude. Had somebody, two dudes cut her face, but he was there. And he was there with a husband. <laughs> I kid you not. And uh, my boy said, yo, you see that guy right there? I said, yeah, what about him? He said, yo, that's a dude, man. They sent them two guys, man, to cut that girl's face in 40 seconds. I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, hey, what's up with that? They said, man, they extort that guy. That guy's giving, giving up his behind and he's giving up money too. I said, really? Damn, you know? So, anyways, um, 
right around that time, you know, things started happening. Uh, some some people were coming from the from the um, the Bear Hill, cut up. And we felt sorry for them. Oh, oh you, you my nigga, yeah. And the guy, um, he said, what happened? Oh, we got jumped. Blah, 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 and they cut us. So, it so happened that, again, it was a drug situation that we found, we found out, you know. And, um, we were going, again, when we found that out, they, day four or five, whatever the case may be, me and my two were ready to go up against these people on the walkway, but then something happened, and they, they called Macho, and they handcuffed him. He was out at Franklin. Then um, I became the president of the main, and um, I would say like maybe four or five days later, I get handcuffed. Ship to Bay Hill. And um, I was like, okay. So when I get to Bear Hill, I'm confronted by a sergeant. And he looks at me, he says, Are you the head of the Nietas in the main? And I said, listen, sir. I'm not going to lie to you because I'm not about lying. Yes, I am. He said, I'm glad you told me that because you see all these pictures, and when I looked, there were half of the nietas. They worked for us. Wow. A bell went over my head. You better get out of this shit, man, because these people made a dick bunch of snitches in this thing, right? So, then he pulls out the letter that I signed to get that guy, either you're going to pay up or you're going to get done with. He said, here, that's your handwriting, right? I looked at him and said, yeah. He said, you got anything to say? I said, I'm in prison within a prison now. That's the box. So they put me in the box. I'm in the box. It was nuts. Believe me, it was nuts. Man. You know, you, you bug out. I held my composure, but there were times, man, that I just you know, I was seeing things, hearing things, all kinds of, you know. And um, if you had a, when you have to take a shower, right? The walk, the path is clear. You have, you have a, what they call it, a, a little rag to walk. And that's what you had, that's all. You come out of your cell naked, you go to the shower, boom, boom, boom. Then you come back into your cell, and that's it, you know. Now, I had met uh, this girl. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her Hazel Eyes. She did have Hazel Eyes. She does have a Hazel Eyes. And she, we were writing to each other. At first... She didn't want to know anything about me. She said, I don't want to know anything about no man, blah, 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 da, 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 da. I wrote a poem. She read the poem, and then she said, you know, you, you're a good writer. I like the way you write, and not only that, but that poem was beautiful, and it's true what you said, you know. She started writing me. Then when I told her I was in the box, she wrote me every day. I'm serious. She wrote me every day to make sure that my mind was intact, you know? And um, 
That's why, to this day, I'm, I'm with, I'm with her. I'm not with her physically, but I'm with her mentally, 150 percent, because she was there, doing a bid with me. She was there when I came home, right? And she gave me a beautiful daughter. What more, what more can you want? You know. And we're the best of friends. Best of friends. Holidays, whatever, she's always looking out for me. You know, and I look out for her too, but she's always looking out for me. So, in that, I'm going to say, we're going to part three. This is going to get heavy. <laughs>